Shaddy Stick. Though he was not bound by the constructs of flesh, he was all too familiar with mortality. Shaddy Stick, I heard you're one of R.A.D.'s toys. At least you won't have death to fear. Even toys have to face the music sooner or later. Originally developed by Sundakarla as a simple suggestion-based AI to provide basic support and occasional entertainment, however, no matter what conversational prompt she gave him, he would never say more than necessary. Instead, it seemed that he was content to be a good listener to his creator's free-spirited, eccentric ideas. Now, to what extent a personality can develop from a technological being has always been a subject of artificial intelligence, whether fact or fiction, but from the four-embodied R2-D2 and Wally to the more human Sonny and Terminator, it seems we are intent on attaching character to inanimate existence. But maybe that's just what Carla needed in order to fulfill her and Walter's vision. Now, let's assume in this alternate reality that not a single one of Walter's hounds made it to Rubicon. At this point, they had no, cho no choice but to rely on Chatty Stick to shoulder their burdens and maybe learn to laugh in the process. Now, in case you missed my first-person mod video, this time around I have added the Logitech flight pedals to take the role of my jump and quick boost, in addition to using a mod that allows you to bring any AC setup to the illegal entry and jailbreak missions to get the full experience from start to finish. After our not-so-graceful landing, I try to get my leg wheels back under me when I am immediately reminded why I haven't played more than a single mission with even this speedier variant of the tank treads. There is just something that feels so weird about their movement to me, but by no means knocking anyone who likes them. Real quick, if you dig any of the Eurobeat covers you're hearing on today's video, I'd highly recommend checking out Alex Yarmak. Really sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but Alex has a ton of metal covers of some awesome classics in addition to original music from a few projects that he has going on. After reaching out, he gave me permission to use the songs for streaming and videos, so I wanted to make sure I gave him thanks and credit for all his work. I'll have his link tree in the video description if you want to check out more of what he's got going on. Now, moving on to what we'll be playing through the run with. Our arsenal today is quite the upgrade from our... co-worker? Underling? I don't know what the pecking order is, but I'm sure that we're above Rummy. Thankfully, Chatty's Circus is pretty well equipped compared to Mad Stomp's loadout. If you're familiar with the boss fight against him and Carla, you'll find that his role is that of a support and his loadout reflects that. However, it is not to say that it's not capable of being aggressive, especially with the wheelchair legs, which are extremely misleading on just how zippy they are. On paper, it shows his boost speed at 328, but once you hit the ground, you'll find yourself easily hitting just below 380 while my bipeds and reverse joints max at the expected number. Though I have no idea how this compares to the other tank treads, the main caveat I found is that despite the fact that it can reach these high speeds, any sort of turn, getting in the air, etc., will cause your speed to slow down while the other legs can maintain their speed as they accomplish the same thing. Not something I expected to learn from this run, but a neat discovery to say the least. Moving on to the rest of the loadout, we have the Basho head and the Wrecker core to really give us that industrial look. We're back to the starter tool arms, but I actually really like the way these look. Not my absolute favorite, but it's up there. Within its mechanical mitts, we have two lightweight bazookas equipped, with the Iridium on the right and the Little Gem on the left. The Iridium has almost half as many shots as the Little Gem, but a much larger blast radius to compensate. Now, for our shoulders, we see some of Carla's love for missiles passed down with the portable carpet bomber in the form of the Delivery Boy on the right and the more simply named BML G1 P07 VTC-12, or the 12 missile vertical launcher on the left. To complement them, we also have the best FCS for Missile Lock, which the Delivery Boy benefits from drastically. For some reason though, Carla opted out of giving Chatty any expansion, so no shields or assault armor. We also have no choice in boosters because tank treads, but anyways, I'll get back to the mission. It was on to the catapult. Walter then gives us a cool nickname before we put on some Eurobeat and zoom off towards our objective. We blast through the enemy to check the three licenses so we can move on to... So we, so we can. God damn it! Uh, there we go. Move on to the PCA warship. Where is my Eurobeat music? <laughs> 
<laughs> kick you in the face. <laughs> this is interesting. I don't know how I feel about this, genuinely. Now, that was to be expected with Chatty's loadout, though I am interested in seeing how other arena combatants would fare against the PCA helicopter. But anyways, as usual, the first two missions weren't too much of interest, though I did show off the stealth boy who's checking out where you landed in the beginning of the game. Next was wiping out the transport helicopters where I opted to fight the tetrapod just to kind of test out the waters. After that, it was time for the where test where pilot. Land, is what I have to presume you're talking about. I need like a soundboard of chatty quotes. Okay. <laughs> Disrespect. I did not realize what I started with that first disrespect, but uh, you'll see. Our next venture was with the Strider, which I was actually curious to see how we'd fare with climbing since the wheelchair doesn't jump and just burns up AN so quickly, but assault boosting kind of does away with that issue entirely, so we just do what we gotta and take out the ab before floating our wally looking ass out of there. Next up was the attack on the dam, where I had opted to take on the red gun since I had skipped it three times for my minimal kill challenge run. Kind of, sort of not really a spoiler for the rest of the run, but this is actually where I take the most deaths. Between just not being used to playing anything close to this playstyle and Volta's bombardment while trying to take out Iguazu, I did end up dying a total of four times. Oh, you bitch. Despite getting my shit kicked in, I will say that compared to my normal build, that extra cushion of 4,000-ish AP really lets you take some big hits and was a big upside to these legs, or lack thereof. Alright, I think this one's it. I have a lot more ammo, I have two repair kits. You dumbass, Iguazu. <laughs> you dumbass. Eager. Uh, but I swear, Volta can be a real menace sometimes in that mission. Unlike the next one. We pick up where the red guns left off and clear out all the targets in the beginning before we drift our way up the wall to face the juggernaut with Rusty. He's just like me. <laughs> Look at him. Tank treads. Missiles. Zooks. you buildings oh 
definitely didn't cost me my entire EN supply to be aerial. Can you shoot rounds out of the air? Did I just... Did my explosion come in contact with his explosion and cancel each other out? Is that a thing? Can you shoot at missiles? That'd be sick as fuck if so. Now, after looking back at this in slow motion, that was not the case. It's just that the volley of attacks are so random in direction that they kind of blended in with the explosion, but if that was a feature, that'd be kind of sick. <laughs> I feel like that can't be. That'd be so cool if somehow FromSoft was like, yeah, you can shoot explosives out of the air. Like, imagine you see an earshot coming out at you and you're just like, you know, fucking red, er, uh, dead eye it. Anyway. After some victory donuts, we make our way to the prison rescue mission, which I did restart once because I went the wrong direction, and that kind of left the transporter copter to take way more damage than I was comfortable with going into the last segment of the fight with, but yeah. The second time around was much cleaner, and I was able to make it to the fight with G2 Nile without taking much damage. <laughs> that was perfect. Hey everyone, Chai Sick here. Today we're defending the RLF helicopter and somehow defying the laws of getting chopped up by a helicopter blaze and or ruining their helicopter blades. I was just like, die. <laughs> the kicks. It occurred to me that we beat the Red Gun second in command this early in the game. Huh. Anyways, let's move on to investigating the Stealthy Stealth Boys once more. Nothing too exciting about this one either. It was actually pretty trivial since most of the enemies were taken out by just a shot from each bazooka. After that, it was time for the autonomous against autonomous fight over at the watch point, but not without our scrap with Sula the Hound Slayer first. Mm. Alright, at least Sula was first try. I didn't think he would be in trouble, but these things still are just... Something to die for. Since this next part is where we normally get air, I did want to ask Skull if you thought that Chatty would be capable of communicating with her. 
I was kind of on the fence about it because she's capable of doing a lot of stuff with electronics, so I feel like maybe on some level they could communicate, or maybe they are such completely different entities that they just are incapable? I don't know, I'm curious to y'all's thoughts on that, but I'll get on to the fight now with Balteas. Does I have none? I just realized, I don't even have to stop moving. I can just, just keep zooming around and not worry about the recoil. I'm definitely not playing this guy's kit right. <laughs> we are bullying him right now. How did that still work? Yeah, I knew, okay, the, the flamethrower is going to be a menace if we are not careful. Oh, fuck. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, I really need him to be a little bit lower. Shit. No, 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 no. Fucking fire! I just try to use my pulse thing that I do not have. Because Carla just likes fucking over her employees. I do not remember ever seeing that attack. And finish it with a kick! Damn it. I was just a second away from it too. Yeah. Whatever. Disrespect. <laughs> First try though, so... Can't complain there. Uh, definitely took more damage than I was hoping. Well... That went pretty well despite my few mishaps here and there. Honestly, I would not have been surprised if that did take a few tries, but with Chatty's AP pool being so much more forgiving, I think that kind of gave me room to figure things out and take the win in the end. Next, it was time to head back to our homegirl at the home grid, where everyone was being real hostile for some reason. Rummy's temperament was one thing, and fortunately, the rabid guard dog had to be put down, but even Carla didn't recognize us, so we go and find the guy with probably the worst credit score on Rubicon lurking beneath this area to see if maybe that was causing some interference. The pest control was limited to bazooka since we're in such close quarters and any missiles would just be eaten up by the ceiling, but Chatty's a well-oiled killing machine and disposes of Nozak with no problem. There we go. Despite this, we had no luck getting everyone to recognize us, so we had no choice but to defend ourselves as we continued to make our way to Carla. Once we got past all the traps that we probably helped lay out, it was time to face the real guard dog of Grid 86, the Smart Cleaner. With this build having a much more grounded style, I was wondering if the oversized Roomba would give us any trouble, but Chatty's probably got more insight to how it works than anyone else, so it's time for our second AI duel. I knew I was not gonna like this fight. I never liked the fight with the fucking slow. No. Well, he's that slow. It's it's something about it is just very weird. I can 
not get his ACS to break because I keep him. Yeah, keep him. So. Did design me, Carla. So well. There we go. So yeah, that also wasn't too bad. I had some trouble keeping my ACS build up in the beginning, but I started to figure out how I needed to approach things and adapted pretty quickly. But at last, we were finally back on Carla's good side, who was ready to put us to work immediately. This time around, we get the much better version of the following mission and get to take out the data probes before our bout with Iguazu and the Stealth Boys. Now, the limited size of this last area did not work in my favor, and it was probably my sloppiest fight of the run. In the beginning, I was able to get some pretty solid combos, but towards the end, I was taking way too much damage, so I had to start to abuse the cover that was available to me, and yeah, we did pull through in the end, but ah, I wish it was a little bit cleaner to be honest. Anyway, moving on to the next mission where Chetty, of course, takes the most logical route and just flies under everything along the way to the Sea Spider. At this point, I was feeling more confident in my abilities with my sports car-like tank treads, and this is one fight where you can really abuse how fast these things are. I think I can literally just keep strafing right on this thing and basically win. I'm, 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 I'm fast as fuck, boy. Oh, shit. Strafe to win. This is a FromSoft game. <laughs> I've only beaten Dark Souls 2, I think. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I've watched enough videos in that. I've learned by social osmosis. Go off in the air already. Can't prevent it. Oh, I prevented it. Just a second. Alright, uh, now here's where I get a little bit handicapped. Yeah. 
shit, shit. Yeah, once you hit a certain speed, it kind of trivializes the fight, doesn't it? I am actually curious to see exactly what number is the breaking point for escaping those lasers, but for now, we were due for a same day delivery that Carla intended to make good on, so we shipped ourselves off before taking on the next job. Like usual, the beginning isn't much, so I'll skip to the ending, which also wasn't very eventful, but oh well. The lesser LCs are just like the stealth boys and can be taken out instantly with the pair of bazookas before we finish off the main guy, the three MTs, and finally the warship before we can move on to the mission where we get to fight one of the cooler LCs in my opinion. For this mission, I always start with the heavy boy hanging out by itself. I come through with a pretty strong opener and deal a fair bit of damage before he punishes me back pretty damn hard. Hey, hey, let me fucking hear you. Hey. In the end, he does go down as the two lightweights approach, but honestly, they've never felt like much of a threat. They just seem so much weaker than him that it feels like it'd be more of a challenge like to add a third or maybe just have the heavier LCs come in a pair. Disrespect! <laughs> Perfect. Either way, we took care of the pair of them pretty easily when it was time to take out Swinburne next. Which got a little delayed because I was goofing around and trying to see if I could drift around the camera MTs and avoid the picture, which uh, I failed at miserably. So I just went about my business and got to our fight with Swinburne. When you have all this open space to just bully them, it's a lot easier. <laughs> Let's not do anything hasty. <laughs> At the end, we have a moment where we channel our inner Rick Grimes by giving Swinburne our word before ultimately disposing of him. Like, how he didn't even... I, I love how the upper body is the only thing that turned around. Now, hypothetically, if we didn't have Air talking to us here, I kind of picture Carla wondering out loud if this is the beginning of Chatty developing a sense of humor that the dozers may have rubbed off on or something of that nature. Yeah, it's... Is my ass too heavy? What just happened? Anyways, onto the refinery plant where I jinxed myself on the way to the main target. Um, so far I haven't taken any damage, by the way. Shit. Before moving on to the extra boys, which wasn't my best work, but it was honest work.
disrespect! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I really tried to get the tank kick disrespect onto both of them, but oh well, I'll take one out of two. Next was some reminiscing about Spy Kids and Three Ninjas as we prepared for the missile defense segment. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the 3D one, you know, so they go with the gimmick there. Spy Kids 3D did Sword Art Online basically before Sword Art Online did. Um, but I don't think you died for real. Now, this time around, Chatty was going to be working extra hard, but seeing as how this is just five minutes of very manageable tower defense, I'll just move on. Here was our first encounter with the Xylem, and the beginning is always the same, but once we clear out the fog, we have a unique start to our fight with the PCA warship this time around. Besides that, this wasn't very eventful, so we'll just move on to our fight with the Cataphract. Here's where I, uh, realize something. So, if everyone thinks of our legs as wheelchairs, then this guy's basically got a walker with tank treads instead of tennis balls. Tenor? Tenor? Not this year. Tenor, tenor. Triple fight! Damn it. Don't do that. And you fight the cataphract if you do fight the cataphract. Oh shit, should not have left go there. happening what just happened bro how did that not count as a kick yo this is kind of starting to piss me off shoot shoot thank you No, oh, I knew I should have done that. God damn it. I guess Jimmy is the stronger fighter. Okay, I don't know what is with these lack of legs and getting picked up and carried by enemies, but that's two fights in a row now. I can't contribute that and that alone to my death, but it, it definitely contributed. And uh, after the win streak that I had going, it was kind of a bummer, but we pressed on after I got my shit together. What? Used to having them jumpy legs. Doing all the work for me. I 
There we go. Play this a lot cleaner this time. You need like that wake up call, I guess. Damn it. That was only the first one. Damn, okay, yeah. Why couldn't I play like this the first time? Disrespect! Yes! <laughs> that was so much better. Unfortunately, we don't assimilate the cataphract into our build, but hey, maybe Carla will take that into consideration among the R&D she's always talking about doing. The last mission for that night was going to be the attack on the old spaceport, where we make quick work of the warships before we pair up with Rusty to take on the LCs. Here, I would normally go for the melee one first, but this time around I opted for the one that buzzes around everywhere, and it went better than I anticipated. Well, I mean, it's fine though. But it is again, a laptop handling everything happening here. Because I, I guess I have uh, essentially hamster powering in everything. <laughs> like, uh, sorry, I'm brain dead, it's getting late, and I'm trying to like both kill and the commentary. Yeah, my laptop will sometimes. It can handle a lot. Like, for some reason, Monster or World, I can basically run the max settings. But sometimes there's other things where it'll just be like, well... I don't know, it's this level, like, earlier on, too. It seemed like it was having just a little bit of a time. Disrespect! Yeah! I think Rusty's stuck or something. There he is. <laughs> Chinese Gray's enemy. A ledge. I can't get up it. It won't let me. I'm trying. There we go. Nope, I still can't. There we go. <laughs> With that over and the Ice Worm's existence revealed, I called it a night, but the next day, I was back at it and ready to finish the rest of the game that night. We start the day out with a nice stroll through the cave that we got to avoid this time around, but then it was time for our 2v1, then 1v1, then 2v1, then 1v1, if you do it right. I mean, it could be a 3v1, but yeah, it shouldn't be. But at this point, my AP was getting whittled down pretty good as the Raven showed up, and yeah... Another death on the board, and honestly, the next attempt was not any better. For some reason, I thought I'd lead Draven away to see if I could get Chartreuse stuck on the wall like Volta, and though it's not horrible, I could have played that better for sure. So that's two deaths now on this mission, and I didn't even take out Raven or Chartreuse, but thankfully, third time was indeed the charm.
There we go. No, 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 you stay away with your fucking pile bunker bullshit. Ah, you get away from me! There we go, jeez. Next up was to go collections mode on an ex-employee who stole company property, but first, listen to this meow my cat Joanna made. You ready for this, tourist? I was absolutely adorable, Joanna. She has never lost her kitten meows, and that one just melted my heart. But anywho, she accompanies us as we go to bid farewell to our old coworker and get Carla's railgun back. Results were explosive. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now, with the brute put down and the equipment returned, it was time to take on the ice worm. I know it's feasible to take it out without the needle launchers, but I really don't think that's necessary for these kinds of runs. But anyways, for this mission, we do deploy a sub chatty bot that we're simultaneously embodying, but with only like 10% of our resources allocated to it. Look at that handsome guy right there. It's a well constructed AC he's got there, let me tell you. Hey, wait a minute. Thankfully, this time around, I only whiffed two shots. In addition to finding some new strategies where I can get through the mission pretty dang quick. Damn it, that was so close. I didn't manage to pull it off here, though I have discovered a way to take out the phase 3 shield basically immediately as it spawns. If you're interested in seeing it, I am trying to get a little more with the times and, you know, start making some shorts and stuff, so I do have that up as a less than minute long video if anyone wants to see it. But anyways, it was time once again to descend to the depths of Rubicon. Despite how comfortable I've got Machadi's build, I will admit that I took a decent amount of damage on the way down because I didn't quick boost right, and normally it's a little bit more forgiving because I have like the .33 quick boost reaction or whatever you want to call it, so yeah. At least there wasn't a death to something as trivial as the little turret hanging out the bottom of this. Moving on to part two, 
The beginning goes how you'd expect, but the fight with Cold Call being in that tight room was reminiscent of Nozak. Not quite as bad, but the majority of it I was relying on the bazookas because, yeah, those tight spots will still just eat up your missiles. Yeah, on him. Never heard him say that. I usually kill him before then. That's interesting. Okay, those are just all the things. Yeah. Oh no, no. Most of them. He's respect. Oh, dude, it wasn't enough. What? Oh, the cluster bomb. Clustered enough to. Now, since that was my first time hearing him say that, I am kind of curious if there's anything else I may have missed out on. I kind of want to do a run where I literally just draw out the fights as long as I can and just make sure I don't miss anything. But anywho, on we go to face the Enforcer, but not before... <laughs> I've never done that before. That was fucking <laughs> bonk. <laughs> Good thing there wasn't a human in this. Imagine you're just in your suit and like you're expecting like, you know, kind of like normal momentum and you just <laughs> inside the fucking thing. <laughs> now, here's where I think Shaddy would have learned to laugh in our run. I could totally see him just sitting there processing everything after he bonks his head when suddenly he breaks out into a slight chuckle that just grows into undying laughter. Now, maybe not, but that's my headcanon for this run. Anyways, our co-pilot Joanna returns once more before the fight with the Enforcer to give us some emotional support. It says my speed is like 330-ish, and I'm going 380 right now. Like, like when I'm- oh shit! Oh man, I'm gonna tell Anubis about that for the Enforcer fight. He just needs to abuse the ramp for the bubble gun. Though being aerial would probably be more effective, honestly. Can 
think we used to be aiming the face too early. I should have stayed below, below that. He would not have been able to hit me. Holy shit. No, no. <sighs> Do you want to get the fuck out, young lady? Uh, that was close. I done did goof the goofins a few times, but uh, it wasn't the worst fight ever, I'd say. Anyway, it's time for attempt two. Yeah, it's... I know, I love the kick. Fuck, 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 fuck! Oh my god! That ramp just saved me. butt clenching and there was a pretty good chance we would have had a double TKO there. <sighs> I am just really glad I didn't have to do that fight a third time but thankfully we did pull through with the shred of AP that we had. Moving on we reached the last of the three parter and zipped past the beginning before having our fight with the ephemera. Thankfully I learned how to manage fighting in a tighter space like this since my run in with the Guazu and the Stealth Boys and yeah we get it on the first try without issue. On to the next part where I decided to help out Flatwell. My thinking behind this and the other missions where I sided with the Liberation Front is that I'd imagine that Carla would at least try to make what time they had left the least miserable that they could. But yeah, as Anubis 520 pointed out here too, it might be cutting it close on ammo for the Red Gunner path, so yeah. I'm also going to use this as a quick segue into another shout out real quick. Anubis is currently routing out a no hit run, and that is without checkpoints. During the practice sessions, he will go through everything and try just to see what the best he can get is, and he is hard at work with his no damage run. And he has been able to beat Sula, among other enemies that I really was expecting to be basically unfeasible with no damage. So yeah, if anyone's interested in that, it'd really mean a lot if you went and checked out his channel. He's always there supporting me during my streams, so I just want to make sure I return the favor. 
Appreciate you, Anubis, and hope you're doing well. But anyways, I'll get back to the 2v2. I just like skipped some lines of dialogue somehow. That was really weird. Like, I felt like I just skipped like to the middle of like. I don't know. Oh damn, that, it, that was actually a uh, an early kill, what I did there, I didn't realize. Like if, if he did, like he still had a repair kit left apparently. Hawkins, don't feel bad. He would have been like, well, at least I'm V5 now. <laughs> oh boy, he's got like split personality or something. Either that or maybe he's like a. From his arena description, I think he's just a sociopath, maybe? I don't know. I don't mean that in like, any sort of like negative sense, I don't know. Like, like, my definition. Ah, this fight and the few that we have with Rusty really just make me want to have co-op in this game. It'd be so cool if we got something in the DLC where we're allowed to have team missions uh, pair up with other people. Hell, I'd even be up for a faction of mercenaries that are completely separate from the story and just doing whatever jobs that come their way. Just please, FromSoft, give me some co-op with the homies. But anyway, speaking of doing whatever jobs come our way, it was time to do what it basically be part four of the descent where we face Rusty, but this time with cooler dialogue from New Game Plus. I was born with purpose, I'm AI. That's what I always intended to do. And, oh shit. God. You sneaky little bastard. Well, that was easy enough. Not 
the most ideal layout for our lack of legs, but we got the job done without taking too much damage, and uh, yeah, now with our Coral Atlantis or Institute City discovered, it was time for the fight I had the most worries about. But not before taking out the Link that made her and the hoo-hai that woos. With them both out of the way, it was time to go to the boss arena that probably give us the worst traction in real life, but thankfully it doesn't play a factor and it just gives us all the room to move about as we have our final bout with Ibis. To see who was the superior autonomous I'm being. Sure like mad here since this is just water. Now, going into the second phase here, I was not feeling super confident with that amount of AP, but I was still gonna try my best. What the how? Pretty good for the first attempt, but this next time around, we needed the right soundtrack to fight, so I put on Alex's Zero Beat Goes Metal once more and got in the zone to some deja vu. What the fuck was that, Daddy? Oh my god, thank you! The, the, the fucking uh, carpet bomb just saved me. Super well in the very beginning. That was 
way faster too, like holy shit. It's the gear OP that he's going here. Take that. What? <laughs> I won't take that. Oh, I dodged it. Can he do it? Can he make it? Can the robot do it? Can he get the disrespect? He gets the disrespect! <laughs> Sorry. He's like, what the fuck just happened? You okay? Why are you yelling? I will comfort you. No, I'm leaving. Get the hell out of here. You're yelling. <laughs> well, that was exactly what I was looking for. Don't get me wrong. It definitely could have been cleaner. But for my second try with only about four and a half hours of experience with this new style, I was pretty happy with the results here. On to the next part where I had actually forgotten that the mob was going to just let me play as Chatty's build, which, as you can imagine, makes this mission even more of a joke. And yeah, I don't even think we let Carla take out one enemy at the end of this. After that, it was back to working a double shift all at once as we hack into the Xylem while we're simultaneously defending it. This really isn't of any interest besides poking fun at the situation, so we'll move on to defending the Xylem again. Margibus. Again. Huh. Up until now, I didn't realize that this was basically just the second wave of their forces. Anyways, it was time to unleash the sub chatty AC once more so we could defend each side of the Xylem, but little sub chatty was struggling, so the main body had to get over there quickly. At the beginning, the first LC was acting really weird and, and blew off past the ceiling, so I just restarted the mission, but the second time we wiped him out before moving on to the nameless guy who unfortunately gets the Materling treatment from Snail once he starts losing to you. Whoa, god damn, okay. I actually forgot he could do that. I do like he did he just do like a shield like a that's kind of neat I like that attack uh that would be a cool thing for DLC <clears throat> from soft next was to go and back ourselves up when we get word that Freud was heading our way he does manage to take out the sub chatty and talks big smack like he wasn't only facing a fraction of our power but whatever it was time to show him what a uh definitely AI controlled AC can do. Oh, Anubis, uh, are you planning to use the arm, like the pulse armor, when you get the chips? What do you mean? You just said all oh, SAI is the same, huh? You techist. Oh, uh, when you. When you start doing arena, do you get the um Are you gonna use the pulse uh, shield? Like the one the one that stays with you, not the like deployable one. Carla, it's me. God 
Desperate. Oh. oh, word. Yeah, that's right, Freud. Your best fight ever was with an AI. Definitely not a human piloting things from behind a screen. But anyways, Carla seemed pretty upset about Subchatty, which, you know, I guess she hates seeing her toys get blown up, but this just seemed like something deeper? Oh well. The next mission actually feels kind of wholesome now, since it's Chatty and Carla basically just competing for warship kills. But anyway, after we beat her score, it was time to face our once friend, now frenemy, one last time. As much as I want to have an aerial fight, I know where my advantages are. Oh shit. Oh shit. I don't think that fight will ever not be bittersweet, but Carla had a job to do and not even Rusty was going to stop us, but speaking of someone trying to stop us. Air makes her debut and tries to thwart everything Walter and Carla had fought for, but we weren't about to let that happen, so we took to the satellites to have our final stand with our former compatriot of the electronic existence. She's just standing there, menacingly. I shouldn't have said anything. You're the one burning up more of your people than I am right now. Like, you're using them as a fuel source, are you not? Woo! 
star screen. Ending was a little, little anticlimactic. I was kind of hoping when she dodged just right at me, and I, I thought I shot the. Uh, maybe she. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad we got first try though. Satisfied, satisfied with that at least. Whew. There's a couple moments there where I was questioning it though. Yeah, what I said. A little anticlimactic at the end there, but in truth, the fight could have really gone either way, especially if I had any more major slip ups. Slightly bummed I didn't try and pull off one last disrespect kick for our final bout with air, but oh well, to have beaten this in just under 5 hours with less than 10 deaths on a very foreign build was enough of an accomplishment for me. So with the fires reignited and our purpose fulfilled, Chatty and Carla were free to go about their days developing whatever her imagination drew up. Thank you again to everyone who stuck it out this far and all the kind words y'all dropped on the Rummy video. If you're enjoying the content, a like or a subscribe goes a long way and really helps out the channel. Also, one last big shout out for Alex and Anubis. It'd really mean a lot if y'all checked out what they got going on and I'll make sure to link everything I can in the description. But anywho, that'll be all for this video. Thank you again, take care, and have a wonderful day.